professor srikumari tk for a brief introduction of our experts srikumari miss good morning all uh, for our second uh, session we have two experts engineer arun babu and engineer rajesh m engineer arun babu r did his be from nit nagpur and pg degree in traffic and transportation planning from edinburgh napier university he is an expert in the field of infrastructure development including uh, construction and design with more than 23 years of experience especially in the field of roads he has shouldered various important roles in various firms in india as well as qatar oman uae etc and also an accredited road safety auditor involved in safety audit black spot analysis etc his area of interest include highway design project management safety value engineering etc our second expert engineer rajesh l is a post graduate in traffic and transportation planning from nit calicut with more than 20 years of experience in highways expressways and infrastructure transportation projects extensively worked on road projects he has played a pivotal role in organizations of international repute like vice president highway division at wilbur smith chief engineering manager at elandi etc and successfully lead the multi disciplinary design team for detailed design and construction support for 20 highway projects which includes multi lane major green field expressways in india agra lucknow expressway uh, samriti ahmedabad mumbai vadodara expressway delhi vadodara expressway etc and proficient in road safety audit and responsibilities undertaken by him are accident black spot analysis designs for improving black spots uh, design of road safety furniture etc and he has secured certification from ministry of road transport and highway on road safety i welcome both of you to deliver the session thank you madam good morning nice to hear from you so uh, basically i'll start first and you know and i don't will get in uh, for uh, and we will be doing the session jointly so i will just uh, share my presentation now so uh, is my uh, slides visible to all can you confirm can somebody yes, confirm sir, yes sir yes sir Okay. Right. Let's go. So, uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, I hope uh, all are uh, safe and healthy uh, during these pandemic days. And uh, I also hope that you are getting a lot of opportunities for uh, online learning of various aspects during this pandemic, which is a specialty of these times. Uh, it's uh, it's my pleasure to be here now uh, with all of you uh, to share uh, some of my insights and experiences. on uh, modern day, modern trends in highway construction basically uh, it's it's a uh, it's a presentation jointly done by me uh, rajesh tilkanthan and mr arun babu who is my dear friend okay so uh, all of you uh, would have uh, clearly noticed that our country now is uh, experiencing a huge uh, development of of highways no i think it started from 1994 or 95 and it's almost 20 25 years now it's still or 30 years almost and it's still continuing in a very good pace and uh, successive governments have been you know focusing on more and more highway development and over the last 30 years we have uh, moved on from a local level to an international standard of you know road highway construction and design so to uh, just to give an overview of uh, the national highway development program which is currently in our country basically uh, there are three major programs going on one is a national highway grade which is almost 36000 kilometers 
so you can see the figure on the right it is like a, it's a grid so as its name says it's a grid where you know horizontal and vertical connectivity across the country and along the country is emphasized so uh, next one is the bharat mala phase 1 which is again 35000 kilometers which is having major highways connecting the, all the um, uh, all the ports all the tourist centers all the backward areas all the district headquarters all the state capitals it all now uh, majorly next one is a big jump from a normal highway program it's an expressway program where uh, almost 8500 kilometers of expressways green field all are green field expressways are planned across the country you can see the figure below on the proposed expressway grid so basically you can see there's a huge uh, you know focus on highway development uh, unfortunately our state of kerala have not witnessed a major highway development for the last 20 25 years so i think uh, now it's opening up here also so maybe uh, next 3 uh, or 4 years we will uh, find lot of you know world class highways getting developed in our own state so you can uh, always go and visit and see what is a major what's a uh, kind of construction going on what's a kind of technology used and all so basically the government of india has targeted a, a road highway construction of 100 km per day so this is a huge and ambitious target and you know you imagine the kind of machinery manpower uh, you know resources and all needed for this kind of a highway program right so this is my overview of the highway program so before jumping on to uh, the various technology material and all the thing i i i would like to give a small insight on to the basic construction process so most of us we are we are hearing about highway construction i would like to take you to the various processes of a highway construction for any highway project in india or in, in fact across the world what will be the process of the highway construction right so i have just go to this slide can you see my slide called construction process yes sir yeah yes, sir. fine 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 so uh, whenever a highway is to be constructed the first thing which we do is you have to do the survey basically we know where the highway is going to be constructed so we need to map the entire terrain and the features of the uh, project area so basically we do a detailed uh, topographical survey which will with using uh, all modern things which i will present in the my further slides so we do a detailed survey and to find out the level the coordinates the various features and everything on the land on which the highway is going to be built that is called the land survey part once the land along with the land survey not once with the land survey, along with the land survey okay. we we'll have Hello. I request you to everybody to go on mute. Uh, maybe presenter can mute everybody, and whoever want to ask question, they can raise their hands. Because we don't have time much much of time, so I just put on one minute disturbance. Sorry, sorry, sir. Sorry. Yeah, not a problem. So uh, once the land survey is completed, we map all the uh, features of the land on the on which the road is built. we do the material survey as you know we need a lot of material like stones sand cement then um, soil everything for the highway construction so the next step is to do a very detailed material survey to identify which are the materials that can be suitably used for our highway second one where are the materials that are available which are suitably used for the material so these are the two things one is inventory of the location where the material is uh, available second one test the quality of the material so that we can use it in our highway construction or we generally we take input also from the uh, test results of the materials to design the highway uh, facility to the material uh, that is locally available so always no our uh, focus will be to use the locally available material to the maximum extent so that the environment impact is minimized even the transportation is reduced the green has any house emissions are reduced so this material survey is a major part in our any highway uh, construction uh, before the highway construction basically so once the survey is complete we have the land data we have the material data then we will go on to the next phase which is called the design and planning this is a very critical phase 
of our any highway construction because a highway which is well designed and the activities which is which is well planned will be able to construct at a very uh, minimal uh, overhead to the cost and time or maybe we may be trying to save the time of construction uh, by a pro by proper planning and design so during the design and planning there are three activities one is the design and drawings once the survey material everything is there we generally develop all the design and drawings which are required for the construction of the highway once the designs and drawings are developed we uh, get it approved by the uh, by any competent authorities like iits or nits or there will be some uh, agency or consultants called authority engineers independent engineers at all so once the design and drawings are approved we issue the good for construction drawings so we will start with the design complete the design get the design and drawings approved once the design and drawings are approved we start giving the good for construction drawing so the end of the design stage is with good for construction drawings also we will generate many specific uh, reports which we which need to be given to the construction team for setting up now once the design is done then we go on to the construction plan this is a very very critical task so here we once the design and drawings are available we we have the time limit we 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 know what is the time available for us for the construction we identify the each task we we detail list out what are the tasks for each highway construction uh, steps then we identify the man and machinery for each of this task and we will do a detailed construction plan which is a very uh, complex uh, program uh, with lot of dependence and uh, de uh, for uh, dependence and uh, the forward uh, think forward uh, taking activities so once the construction plan is made we clearly know what is the time hello there is some disturbance again can i continue yes, sir you can turn sir mute all for participants sir please mute all please continue sir yeah so construction plan is a once we we have the design drawings we develop the construction plan so clearly we know what is activity of the road construction and when are we going to start when are we going to end what are the dependent to the activities what are the activity uh, material requirement to the activities what are the procurement requirement for the activities all those things are detailed the uh, woven in in the construction plan so with this construction plan we issue to the field engineer to go ahead with the construction like you know uh, uh, we need to procure what kind of material we need to uh, when to procure material when to deploy a machinery uh, how many manpower is required when to deploy the manpower at various parts of the site whether are we going to start uh, at 10 place at, at 10 locations on the highway or are we going to progressively start one one by one all those things will be detailed in the construction plan once the construction plan is ready then we have the major task called procurement procurement is basically the uh, we have to get the material we have to get there are many natural material which will be required there will be many brought out items which will be required like bitumen is a brought out item uh, there will be some all you know, the road furniture road signages there will be lot of things which will be brought out items then there will be bearings to the bridges there will be uh, hand railings all those there, there will be huge array of items which are naturally available or it has to be brought out so all this strategy once the based on the construction plan the procurement is initiated so where we get the material at the right time at the right place not even an earlier not even late if you buy some material earlier it will it its life will get affected if it is uh, material is coming late then we have problem with the construction uh, progress so this procurement is very important task but linked to the construction plan okay now going to the next phase so we have our designs and drawings ready we have our construction plan is in place then we have our procurement and material is coming in so we start the construction phase of the project which is there are three phases in it one is called the physical construction that means we use a lab is use a men and machinery to construct the various components of the highway that is very simple now second one very important thing is quality assurance and control we cannot just construct a highway like that because all the each and every material each and every step of the construction has to follow a proper quality protocol and there are lot of material tests to be done during construction so that we ensure that we construct a highway which is 
very simple, very uh, near to the thing which is designed. Okay, so quality assurance and control plays a very important. So there will be separate team for the quality assurance and control during construction. They will take the tests. They will uh, see whether the material is suit, uh, the material rolling is okay. They will see whether the material quality is good. Whether the densities are okay. Everything they will check. So along with that uh, uh, physical construction, we have the progress monitoring. See, we had decide, we have made a construction plan. So we need to monitor the construction activities. We need to monitor the pace of construction to find whether it is as per the construction plan or not. If it is not as per the construction plan, then we need to take corrective actions. So it is very important we do the progress monitoring also during the construction phase. So once the physical construction with the quality control and the monitoring is completed, then we have this phase called handover phase. So we know that we have made the asset, we have constructed the highway. Now we will have, we have to hand over to the client or the road user. So basically there will be three parts to it. One is a testing. That means once the, once the road is constructed, we need to do a lot of tests. Like a load test for the bridges. We need to see whether the width of the road is as per the design. We have to see whether the strength of the pavement is as per the design. Everything is there. So we have to do a huge and we have a road safety audit during the pre-opening stage. Whether we have our road constructed is safe enough for the road user. All those things will come under the testing phase. Then we have a documentation phase. So because highway construction has been following for a lot of years. So we have to document each and every phase of the construction. That means we have to document what is the design drawings. We have to document what is the quality assurance plan. We have to, we have to document the various the test results conducted during the construction. All those things have to be documented for future use for to anybody. To maybe it can be uh, it will be used for a few, if there is any future problem in the highway, we can go back to the documentation and see what happened when, well, and was there any problem. So there is a huge documentation process. Then as built drawings. Once the highway constructed, we generate the as built drawings. So all this as built drawings has to be documented. So that it can be referred for long. Once the documentation everything is completed, we hand over the project to the public or the road user. They start using the facility. Then we have the operation and maintenance of the highway or defect liability grid service of the uh, highway. Basically, for all in projects in India and world, there is something called defect liability period. That means the contractor is responsible for rectifying any defect which is found less uh, found after the during the operation of the highway. Roughly the defect liability period is five years in India. So uh, and OM again operation maintenance is a very big activity because we cannot just uh, leave the highway like that because road, when users use the highway there will be maintenance issues will come up. So we have to use the do the operation maintenance of the highway. So basically there's are the basically uh, these are the four uh, process of any highway construction surveying, design planning, construction phase and handover phase. Now we will now go into each of this one and find out what are the various new new, new technologies which is used for all this basic activities, right? So, before moving to that, what are the factors that are inducing the technology change? Because technology change, if I open to, it, open to say that the construction industry is the last industry to adopt a technology to this level because there is always a resistance uh, you know, by all the authorities, by the, all the people also to adopt new new technology in highways. But now things have changed. Even the government has, uh, is putting major uh, now, uh, emphasis on technology. So finally we are adopting a lot of new technologies in highways. So basically why we need to adopt the tech new technology. So first thing is to improve speed. Basic, basic things is to improve the speed. If you can construct at a lesser, if you have, we, we have seen that the target of highway construction is 100 kilometers per day. So if you want to construct at that pace, we need to adopt new technologies so that we construct at a greater speed. Second one is improved and consistent quality. So it is very easy when the speed of the construction is improved, then it, there will be a problem with the quality. Always we can we, we find out that quality is not consistent. So we need to use technology to uh, improve the construction quality and uh, uh, and consistent construction quality. Not only the uh, main concern, but it's consistent construction quality. Then optimum usage of materials. So we, we, we all know that there is a huge scarcity of materials. So we need to use an optimum use of materials for that new materials and new technology has to be used, which will optimize the use of materials. Then minimize environment pollution. We have to identify, we have to invent new machines, new machinery, new materials where which will minimize environment pollution during construction. Then scarcity of unskilled and skilled manpower. Everybody know we have a huge scarcity of 
skilled and unskilled manpower, especially during this pandemic times. So we need to have a better automation, automation of the machinery machines and more number of machines, which will mitigate the scarcity and so that many of the process can take over by tech, can be taken over by the machines. Then pandemic induced appropriate behavior. Now this pandemic is here to stay. So we we cannot now allow uh, a large congregation of people. We cannot allow lot of people to work at a point of time at particular site. So we need to identify a lot of things to where the intervention of people at a particular activity is minimized. Like monitoring the project, it can be remotely monitored. So if more machines are used, less number of manpower is required. So in that way, we will reduce the, uh, the number of people who required at a particular point of time. Then we have invent of electric, electric vehicles. You know, we have seen invent of electric vehicles in our country. So we, this also will involve uh, a change in the roadway construction and all those things. What do you mean by a modern construction? So basically, it is I, which we have discussed. It's a, it's, we are we are using modern survey techniques. We are using modern planning and design techniques. We are using modern plant and machinery, and we are using new materials. These are the basic four components of a modern construction. Now, let us see each of these component and what are the major modern construction techniques available for each of this. In this. Uh, I will be covering the survey, planning and design and the plan admission. Material part will be covered by engineer Arun Bhav in a very detailed manner. First of all, let us go to the modern survey. So you see the, in, uh, the progress of the survey or advancement of technology in survey. So in 1900s, we used to have a plain table, which still we have in many of our colleges. We have a plain table, we have the dumpy levels, which have uh, uh, inverted readings, so you have to read the inverted readings and you have to correct it to the original uh, reading. Then we have the theodolite. So theodolite basically it is uh, required to set out the bearings, angles and all. So these were the things which were available in the 1900s. So in 1990s, the basic uh, revolution in our survey methodology came by invention of GPS, which is called Global Position System, which was invented in 1990s for uh, our highway projects basically and all the survey uh, projects. Uh, survey, uh, 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 survey methodology. Uh, now GPS has come into even our phone and all. That's a different thing. But this GPS is a very accurate GPS which is used for construction. Then we have invented the total session which has totally erased the th requirement of theater line. So total session has really uh, pro uh, invented uh, really uh, it's a big invention where it uh, really uh, contributed to the speed of construction. Then we have auto level. So we are very clear now. We don't have any dumpy levels now. We have a clear auto level which will just uh, measure the levels using a prism and it is automatically recorded. So it's a very uh, big invention in 1990s. Now we have further, now further moved in 2021. Now we are going with something called LIDAR technology or drone photometry, photogrammetry. So that means we don't want any man and anybody to go to the field. If we have advanced systems which can measure the, uh, uh, take the survey, we can measure the terrain, everything in a very fast and efficient manner. So I'm just going to share you one small video on the LiDAR technology. This is the, uh, the uh, buzzword now, which we are extensively using in our country also. Can you hear my voice, uh, hear the video uh, voice? No, sir. No, sir. Yes sir. yes, sir. Now, can you hear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, now it is not uh, here,
वॉइस इज नॉट ऑडिबल सर सर एक्चुअली वी कॉन्ट हियर सर साउंड ऑफ वीडियो Is it an issue? Uh, the voice was not audible. Actually, you can explain, uh, Rajesh, please. Voice was not audible. See, basically, I think I think I have to do something else because uh, if you start explaining, it will take a lot of time. Uh, uh, what is the like purpose of that video? You can just explain that. See, basically, that video, it's it's you can clearly see the drones, how the drones are used in surveys. So drones. we can use in uh, in in a very effective manner now to to take all the features of any terrain or any uh, area we use the drone survey so that means we will minimize the uh, number of people required so even if the place is not accessible even if the location is not accessible we can use a drone to capture all the data which we want so basically there are two advantages one is we we get a faster uh, sorry sir to data. interrupt sorry is there any problem hello 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 nothing sir you may continue sir so i will try to just uh, do something i will let me see the next video one second i will just uh, try to uh, present the video uh, uh, the, this itself i will try to share the presentation itself uh, instead of desktop so maybe let me know whether if you can hear that voice the video voice actually now It's not, it's not playing it's not playing it's not playing rajesh the video is not playing actually i think some uh, connection no issues you press proceed with the next uh, this one no issue. Uh, terrain it can uh, need very less manpower 
and the data is instantly captured and uh, you know analyzed and captured in our uh, designs for the designs so coming to the uh, next one is once the survey is done and material is done we have the modern design tool so we no longer use any manual design techniques so there is an array of uh, design tools available for the design of the highway basically the list of tools which have uh, list, uh, uh, shown in the presentation are the widely used ones so basically for the pavement design in india we use two softwares called iit pave and iit rigid and for the geometric design we use uh, autocad then we have op mx open roads and civil 3d all those three uh, major uh, platforms then for the drainage design we use something called civil storm and civil 3d and for the bridges uh, a lot of people have here heard about it about stat pro and midas so these are the major softwares then for the slope stability and all those things we use something called risa geo5 and plaxis software these are uh, fem finite element analysis softwares which we use for our uh, designs of slope stability so there is a video on the uh, 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 design uh, autocad civil 3d which i will just uh, present to you i will just open the video directly now let me know whether the voice is clear okay so voice now yes sir no no voice i think that's okay something there's no voice coming on to you no sir no sir video is playing but no sound One second, I let me check. There is some problem there. Okay, if you are sharing to window mode, uh, it will play. Okay. Sorry? Uh, you are actually you are sharing your screen now. Let me check. Let me check because I want this to be interactive. Otherwise, uh, let me share my window. Let me try. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. You, uh, while you share, no, there is there is an option. Use system volume. There is one checkbox over there. So you can click on that, then it will come. Yeah, include system audio. That's what. Yes, I, yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay. Let me let me. Okay, that's good, good. Thank you. Let me check. Let me just now play this. You know, let me know whether it is audible. How is the voice now? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir.
India and said this job is related to a machine. Is that 
wait and Sender system is uh, uh, controlled. All the gradation, everything can be controlled using a uh, advanced computer. So we need not worry about the quality and uh, the quality of the mix. Now, next one is called hot mix plant. So basically, this hot mix plant is used for uh, uh, creating uh, the bituminous mixes, which is a very important uh, mix for any highway construction. So let us see this video of a hot mix plant. Published in the design process. As a general rule of thumb, the larger the size of aggregate in the mix, the greater the load bearing capability of the pavement. The contrast would be between a tennis court, for instance, and a interstate highway. Different types of liquid asphalt cement binder, some with performance enhancing additives, are also used for different types of mixes. And this is why you'll find different stockpiles of aggregate materials and multiple liquid asphalt tanks at a modern plant facility. The production process itself is all computer controlled. Different sized aggregates are fed into individual hoppers, referred to as cold feed bins. And by using variable speed belt conveyors at the bottom of the hoppers, the aggregates can be extracted and ratioed from the cold feed bins into the plant based on the job mix formula and the desired production rate. A screen is typically positioned between the cold feed bins and the drying drum to keep any oversized material from accidentally getting into the mix. And the final conveyor feeding the material into the drying drum will have a belt scale in it, which measures the combined flow of the material as it passes over the belt so that liquid asphalt cement can be properly proportioned into the mix later in the process. Since asphalt cement is a petroleum derived product, aggregates must be dried and heated for the asphalt cement to successfully bond to the aggregate particles to produce the final asphaltic mixture or asphaltic concrete. The most cost-effective way to do this is with a rotary rock dryer with a burner embedded inside of it. As material enters the rotary drying drum, it progresses toward the burner, lifting and tumbling in the hot gas stream, drying and heating to the final mix temperature. This trip usually takes three to five minutes depending on the size and type of plant facility. As water turns to steam, the gas velocity inside the dryer increases substantially. This gas velocity can approach 50 to 60 miles per hour depending on the production rate and the moisture level. If you've ever stood on a beach in a storm, you know how this amount of wind can carry sand right off the beach and into the air. You can therefore imagine the carryout potential as the sand and the fine aggregate are tumbled in a hot gas stream inside a dryer. This is important to us with our plant facilities because as you dry and heat material in the dryer, Fine sand and dust particles are carried out with the steam and the expanded air. These particles must be collected and returned because they're important to the mix formula. The dust control equipment on the plant does this. The first square box in the duct is called a knockout box. Small sand particles are collected in this box and returned right back into the drying dump. The second and larger box, which has the exhaust fan attached to it, collects the finer dust. This box is filled with hundreds of bags on cages, much like a vacuum cleaner. Collected dust is then cleaned off the filters using compressed air or reversing the process gas flow, depending on the type of collector. And when it falls down into the hopper, a screw conveyor returns the dust to the process. Learning how to successfully operate a rotary dryer and the burner for controlling mix temperature and the dust collector for fines return is a key skill set for a plant operator. Since asphalt pavements can be produced using reclaimed asphalt pavement or wrap, plants are also equipped with wrap bins that allow proportioning a reclaimed pavement into the mix. Wrap is introduced into the drying drum after the virgin aggregates are dried and heated. A scalping screen to keep out oversized material and a belt scale is also used in these conveyors to measure the flow of the wrap into the plant just like the virgin material. In the drying drum, what is actually occurring is the virgin aggregate is being superheated so that it in turn can dry and heat the reclaimed asphalt pavement particles. While virgin aggregate and wrap is being dried and heated, liquid asphalt cement is being drawn out and measured into the process. As we discussed earlier, there are typically different types of asphalt cement depending on the type of mix being produced. The asphalt cement is metered against the flow rate of the aggregate and the reclaimed pavement 
moving into the drying drum. The computer controls adjust the amount of new binder for both the virgin aggregate and the recycled it's aggregates that already is, have uh, usable binder in them. And it is getting Some plant facilities have a separate mixing device, like the mixing drum you see here, where the new liquid asphalt cement is added to the virgin aggregate and wrap as the last step in the mixing process. These outside mixers are added for a variety of reasons, but plants are also designed so that this entire process is accomplished in one piece of equipment. The completed mix now is transferred to the storage silos for dispensing into trucks. See the mix is Most urban plants close. have several silos, so different it's mixes can be stored mix. for multiple jobs. And the silos are often heated and insulated so the mixes can be stored for extended periods of time. Computerized loading controls the accuracy of the loading and ticketing process, and the mix is sent to the job. Arrives in the factory with crushed aggregates. A loader is used to load these aggregates into appropriate bins. Cement arrives in a cement truck, which is then pneumatically pumped into cement silos. Aggregates are weighed accurately and sent to twin shaft mixer. Once weighed, cement, aggregates, water, sand and chemicals are mixed in a twin shaft mixer to create a homogeneous mix material can produce different types of concrete. Concrete can have varying strength or slump depending on recipes. Central lubrication system is used in all moving parts of the concrete mixer to ensure trouble-free performance. PLC from Siemens is used to make the plant intelligent. All the plant is centrally managed, used WebCon control system. WebCon works on SQL database, recording all the information and saving it locally or in remote servers. Multiple plants can be connected using WebCon as an effective management tool. The data can be sent in real time to any of your server or your The real time A docket is printed specifying the ingredients of the concrete mix. Concrete is now ready for use and is discharged from mixer into mixer truck for delivery to the customers. GPE offers concrete batching plant tailor made to your requirements. Get in touch with us. German plant experience. These are basically the mixers which we have. Now, in, now I'm going to a set of uh, machinery which is used for the laying and compacting of these mixes. So, first one is a grater. Basically, grater is used for uh, spreading the uh, soil, uh, which is a um, uh, basic layer of a, uh, any highway.
that was a great and to uh, uh, construct the embankment of the any highway now we have something called asphalt sensor paver because the bitumen and all those things has to be laid even the wet mix macadam and all are laid uh, in the, the proper thickness and lines and levels using a sensor paver so i will just uh, show you the video of a asphalt sensor paver uh, which will uh, which is used in our country extensively
this were for the pavements and roads. Basically, now we have a huge number of bridges and viaducts. A lot of things are getting constructed. So there are uh, huge mechanized launching girders available for uh, launching of these bridges. So basically, China ha China is in the forefront of uh, you know uh, designing and executing many uh, uh, large viaducts using very advanced uh, launching girders. So let us see some of the launching girders. It's a very interesting how the bridge is launched. This copy. So these were the launching girders which we have, we have seen. So now going on to the simple machine which is a curb laying machine. So all the highways we have curbs. So we can just have a uh, glimpse of the curb laying machine. Basically, some of the modern plant and machine 
machinery which is used so from uh, wet mix material wet material to hot mix material to concrete to grading the using it and laying the different layers of pavement so we have seen a lot of uh, you know an array of modern plant and machinery which is used there is a huge number of things which is uh, adopted in everywhere so i have shown you some of the things which you will you know uh, you will you know remember for now you know whenever you go to some construction plant you can also see whether this kind of materials are used or not uh, plants are being used or not now coming out the next thing is called is precast culverts you know lot of precasting is getting uh, you know uh, getting into our construction in the field now so we are slightly late coming to this precasting but now we are uh, picking up and there's something called precast culverts so basically uh, we can uh, do the uh, casting of the culverts in the plant and then you can uh, you know launch it and keep it here so basically if you can see uh, this is high quality we have a faster construction and all so uh, maybe the uh, maybe the savings minimum 15 days that means we are saving 15 days per culvert so it's a huge saving so i will show you the uh, uh, video of how uh, culvert is made in the factory
precast culverts, which are we are using extensively in our country also. Uh, Rajesh, uh, uh, I would like to just uh, tell that you now this uh, similar type of design we have did, uh, and then the construction and as well as placing of culvert is going on in AC road. So if yeah, somebody yeah, wants, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think yeah. I think I encourage you to visit the place. Yeah, Matthew, Matthew sir can coordinate with ULCCs and arrange for a visit. Actually, similar lot of pre precast techniques are uh, established there. So uh, coming on to the culverts to uh, something called segmental bridge construction. So when we want to do construct a huge uh, number, long bridges like viaducts and elevated corridors, we use something called a segmental construction. So I'll just, uh, it's basically it is only used if the, like the span is very high and it will be easily constructed and it is having good quality and good appearance and everything. So I will just uh, show you one video on the segmental construction of a bridge. Now this is the start of the bridge construction where the pile foundation is done. So when the layout is done, you do the piling. You can see to the whatever depth required, so it is 25 meters. You lower the pile cage, reinforcement cage, then to the concrete. And connect all the piles with a pile cap and also reinforcement structure. Then we have the piers and both of the pile cap.
is widely used in India for all the elevated corridors and metros. So uh, there is a plan for developing an elevated corridor from Arur to Toravur in uh, Kerala. So design is going on. So once uh, I think we maybe next two next two years we may uh, start uh, the construction of that uh, segment. So where there you can find out all this kind of segmental bridge construction. So uh, now we have just gone ahead and explained about the machines and men, uh, machinery and all the segmental bridge. Next thing is called that machine automation. No, this is the next level. So all these machines are automated now uh, using uh, uh, this is called level one automation. So basically the lines and levels and the models are fed into the machine directly to do the uh, uh, laying and uh, compaction doing the like, uh, laying of the la different layers and all. So we'll get us have a small video of a 3D grade control. There are three aspects. One is 3D grade control and third one, second one is 3D paving. So you can directly input your design model onto the machine and machine will do all the uh, lines and levels of the uh, different layers using your design. So I'll just show you, I have a video with 3D grid control. What happened was that the whole work to do was done. Now it's not easy to do 3D. If you put it in the automate, it's not going to work. The advantage of this technology is now we can even work in night shifts and this is helping us to control our uh, time frames. Accuracy, 3 mm. 6 mm. Now, something called 3D paving, so we, it's similar thing. New asphalt paving solution from Leica Geosystems, the pioneers of 3D stringless paving. Use Leica Icon Asphalt Pave for the placement of cement treated base as a quality foundation layer for your pavement. Use Icon Office for model preparation and Leica Connex for uploading of the project files to the panel. Save project time and costs and avoid waiting for a surveyor to stake out the project. Use the 3D solution from Leica Geosystems on asphalt pavers for pre-compacted ground foundations. Ensure correct placement of material in grade and slope and avoid waste of material. Start paving directly without waiting for manual stakeout and reduce project time substantially. As built checks are synchronized with MC1 and Leica Connex. The height offset is easily changed on the run screen. Automatic swap to the next total station when free line of sight is blocked or when the distance of the total station to prism is exceeded. Use the automatic screed extension for continuous paving and use automatic steering for machine guidance. Benefit from more than 20 years experience from the 3D paving pioneer to ensure that your projects are always on time to specify. This is happening. This is a machine automation control. And uh, next something is called intelligent, intelligent compaction. That means uh, it will, uh, there's an automatic, uh, automatic sensor on the uh, 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 roller which will uh, automatically detect the amount of compaction which is done. So it is it's a very uh, interesting and advanced system. Intelligent compaction, or IC, is an advanced roller-based technology. It uses real-time compaction control during road construction to ensure utmost quality control with complete documentation. IC allows more efficient and consistent compaction for soil subgrade, granular subbase, and asphalt pavements from the ground up, improving pavement quality and extending pavement life. IC consists of an accelerometer-based measurement system, high-precision positioning system, HPPS, 
infrared temperature sensors, and an onboard computer that displays a real-time color-coded map of roller passes, asphalt surface temperatures, and intelligent compaction measurement values, or ICMV. ICMV is related to the stiffness of compacted materials, which is associated with compaction quality. Many IC applications now incorporate cloud computing, facilitating advanced data management. In the 1980s, Continuous Compaction Control CCC, created for soils compaction in Europe. Since the mid-2000s, the U.S. has led the world in IC innovation, integration and standardization. Currently, the IC vendor Amon Case, Bomag, Caterpillar, Dynapack, Hom, Sakai and Volvo. Trimble also provides aftermarket IC retrofit kits to convert conventional rollers to IC. The Federal Highway Administration. F so basically, this is uh, compacting on the go because we need not do any checking of the levels and li uh, densities and all. So it will be automated. So it's very uh, very uh, interesting one. This not not have started much in India, but uh, we are uh, expecting this to happen another next another two, one or two years in India also. Now, next level is connected machines and IoT because uh, we can see because, we, we all, because of the, all the sensors, you know, for all the machines. So, all the uh, construction machines are uh, attached with sensors at various places to uh, connect and communicate to a central server. So, basically, we can see whether the machine hours are, whether the machine is idle or not, or how many hours the machine is worked or not, or whether there is any maintenance problem or not. Everything is, uh, you know, can be, uh, you know, sensed through a uh, sensor. Basically, so all those machines will have sensors which will sense all the major activities of these machines and on a real time it can be monitored by anybody anywhere. So if somewhere the some machine is stopped, so earlier we, we have to go there and see why the machine is stopped. Now with kind of connected machines and IoT, we can know which machine is stopped where and how many times which machine is stopped. Again, if some productivity levels, we can directly measure the productivity level. If some, what is the productivity of the machine? Uh, per hour or per day. So it can be re monitored on the real time. So if we can see if some machine is not productive much, so we can get the information on a very real time basis, on an instant basis on a remote uh, location. So that we can do uh, uh, proper uh, adjustments to the machine, either maybe the machine may be in repair or machine may be having some material problem. Anything, such things can be identified at a very real time basis and we can resolve those. And even the predictive maintenance. So we have to clearly, we can clearly define the when machine can should be maintained. So if you can have such information before, so we can do a proper maintenance of the machines so that we will be like do not lose time due to machine breakdowns. So anything is possible now with this connected machines and IoT. So uh, I will just show you a small video on this. Thank you, uh, thank you, Rajesh. Um, uh, uh, as we already uh, discussed about roads, you know, roads and construction methodology, equally uh, plays important role of uh, material also. So, uh, uh, India got around 50 lakh uh, kilometer of road, you know, road network, as well as you know uh, that uh, highways uh, 
compounding around 1.5 lakhs. And even in Kerala, uh, tremendous construction activities on uh, uh, highways is in uh, peril. And then uh, this is uh, like uh, it requires a lot of material. If somebody can uh, suggest me or 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 tell me about how much quantum of material uh, required for uh, approximately one kilometer of road construction, a uh, four lane road or six lane road, if you can uh, suggest me how much you know I can uh, give more uh, light on to that. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, somebody can respond. Yeah. No, if if see most of see in in Kerala itself, we are having some twenty NHI package. National Highway Authority of India is launching around twenty packages, and each package is varying uh, from thirty to forty kilometer. So uh, forty kilometer means thirty-five to forty kilometer road construction may require. Uh, can you just imagine how much uh, quantum of material is required? Just, just a thought. No, just tell me. Including subgrade uh, um, means granular bases, bituminous courses, everything together. Just a ball pack figure. If somebody can tell me. So okay. Uh, it so, will be some. After. Yeah, tell me please. Um, some forty-five, uh, twenty-five lakh uh, meter cube. Exactly, uh, you are very near. Actually, we we require around uh, uh, thirty to fifty. Sometimes it may up to go up to one crore uh, cubic meter of material. So uh, we we require for each uh, 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 forty kilometer uh, of completion of roads. So uh, and then when we say uh, forty uh, lakh or forty five lakh or fifty lakh uh, cubic meter. Can you imagine how much number of uh, uh, dumpers which actually contain around 10 to 15 m cube of material? So can you imagine number of uh, uh, trucks flying for uh, supplying those materials? That will be up for 50 uh, lakh cubic meter of material. We may require around uh, around 5 lakh uh, uh, number of uh, tracks to be plied or, or numbers of trips need to be made to dump that much material. It's a huge quantum. So and for constructing like 300 or 350 kilometer of roads within Kerala, it's, it, it, it impacts our nature. It, it uh, taps all our natural resources and, uh, and uh, the environment it's going to hit it by the enormous construction activity. It is not only tapping off natural resources as well as the pollution created by the vehicles, uh, construction activities, and this is you know beyond our uh, like okay for the purpose of development we need to suffer these things, but then uh, uh, by adopting new material as well as new technologies, new design, we can minimize them rather than avoiding may not be practical, but then we can minimize these things. So there are a couple of uh, uh, um, items we I would like to discuss. So uh, Rajesh, please next. Yeah. So uh, this high strength base and sub base, uh, as you may all aware, you know, uh, the road consists of uh, uh, three, four layers, which is basically a good uh, subgrade, which is where the foundation of uh, road crust is resting. on. OK, and uh, 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 ground improvement and then good uh, CBR. We, we normally uh, interpret it with it with uh, CBR. Yeah. So CBR high CBR values means lesser payment crust and then uh, uh, lesser material. So if you if you can attain a better CBR, then your hard work is done. So other than that, uh, normally uh, can can somebody suggest what are the layers used normally in our current uh, uh, road construction? Can somebody tell?
Hello, please. Say so one is uh, GSB. Uh, GSB means Grand R Subbase, uh, which is uh, a base as well as subbase as well as it acts as a, a drainage layer. And then above that, WMM, which is base granular, uh, granular base. And above that, we use base uh, bituminous layer and then wearing coats. So these are the major uh, three or four uh, components which we uh, utilize in the construction of uh, uh, road. So here, uh, there is one uh, a small uh, uh, figure is shown where GSB is 200 mm, WMM is 250 mm, and DBM, DBM means dense bituminous macadam, which is 90 mm, and then wearing also 40 mm. So uh, now uh, the, the innovative uh, 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 the design to reduce and design and construction to reduce this uh, WMM and uh, uh, DBM thickness. Uh, IRC is already come, came up with, this is a very old, means not old, it to, uh, since 90s, uh, Britain is uh, constructing almost their roads with the city base and city sub base. So uh, basically it's uh, cement treated sub base and uh, cement treated bases. So WMM as well as GSB is mixed with uh, some percentage of uh, cement which will improve the uh, modulus of elasticity, which, which will uh, effectively increase the tensile uh, capacity of the road and then reduce the, the thickness, which will also improve the life of the uh, road. So uh, WMM, you can see by replacing it with uh, uh, CTB, uh, okay, sorry, GSB has been replaced with the CTSB, means cement treated subways of 200 mm. WMM has been reduced by around uh, 75 mm. That means 30 percentage of the reduction has been happened. And the similar case led to DBM also. But then for that BC, wearing goes thickness, uh, because minimum thickness is envisaged in the uh, IRC or, or design standards, we may not be able to compromise on that due to gradation and other uh, traffic uh, movement issues. So, uh, see, around 30% of reduction we are directly uh, getting by utilizing or adding 2 or 3 percentage or maximum 3.5 percentage uh, uh, cement in the subbase, means granular subbase, which is uh, ineffective. We are saving around 1,50,000 trip of uh, uh, vehicles in case of 50 lakh uh, cubic meter of construction. Next, please. Okay, uh, see, when uh, in Kerala, uh, see, I'm not going uh, because uh, we are a constrained state with a lot of, uh, we don't have choices of natural resources much to utilize it. It is not the fact in Karnataka or uh, uh, Tamil Nadu where uh, material is available, but then uh, everywhere uh, this uh, uh, environmental issue is a major concern. So uh, reducing and reutilizing the material uh, is the crux of the matter. And then uh, now uh, the mat like uh, reclaiming asphalt payment. There are a couple of methods uh, like uh, in situ, uh, we can mill the material and then enhance it with a certain amount of uh, asphalt, uh, means uh, uh, bitumen or forms bitumen or, or uh, uh, no, no, normal bitumen or, uh, and then relay there itself. The, those type of machines are available which call milling uh, machines uh, which will be allowed to utilize the or relay the material in the site itself. And there is another method completely mill the material and then take to a nearest plant, enhance it with uh, emulsion or bitumen and then bring back to add some, uh, check the gradation and improve the gradation, uh, meet the uh, standards and then bring back to the site and relay it. So that is another process which is uh, 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 hot mix plant, plant in mix method. So these are a couple of methods and then uh, when you use uh, this wrap, means wrap means reclaimed asphalt pavement, uh, this material can be uh, like WMM can be replaced with wrap some in some cases, and then we can achieve the same result, even better result than 
CTB in some cases, if we are, we can utilize at least 50 percentage of the material uh, uh, of uh, milled material. So milling normally, a milling thickness varies from uh, like uh, 25 to 50 mm or maximum 60 mm. So a higher thickness milling will have uh, cost implication because of multiple uh, uh, milling uh, rounds may be required to completely, completely get the material. Next, please. So uh, then, then uh, again, reutilizing or reusing the material, we can reusing the material of uh, aggregate, like uh, demolished material uh, of buildings or uh, demolished concrete uh, pavement or say anything. Or only require you you require a screener and then crusher, which need to be uh, put into the standard uh, gradation. Uh, range that material need to be brought in that requires screening as well as uh, uh, crushing. That's next. See, uh, apart from that, then the warm mix as well. If you if you know, uh, like anybody having an idea, uh, how much uh, uh, at what temperature we are laying the uh, temp uh, like uh, bitumen at site or bituminous forces in site. So it will be varying from but, 150 but, to, yeah, uh, please. 150, 150, 150 degrees Celsius. Yeah, 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 correct. But that for that, we need to heat much beyond that, like uh, 150 to 200 uh, Celsius. We need to heat it and then uh, uh, we need to bring and lay uh, the, the temperature should not be less than 120 and sometimes okay uh, in in restricted cases it allowed up to 100 but then uh, anything lesser uh, than 120 may not be uh, may not be beneficial for a long life can you, can somebody suggest why we are heating this much for uh, getting better bonding of material yeah bitumen yeah. and uh, aggregate. Yeah, correct. This is to decrease the viscosity, right? To decrease the viscosity and then sustain it for a longer time, we need to heat it up to that much. So it, it, it consumes a lot of uh, power as well as by laying itself, it is very, very uh, like health issues created, creating to the laborers and other people also. So uh, when and, and another another thing is it is it, it it requires around thirty to forty percent extra uh, fuel to generate that much heat and sustain it. And then also we need to keep these normally uh, the hot mix plants and other things will not be allowed within the town. We need to keep it you know uh, because environmental clearance may not be available within the town and then people the public will object it. So that they have to keep it away. So that much time, the temperature has to be sustained. So and viscosity has to be reduced for that much longer period. So this can be avoided by adopting warm mix asphalt. The warm mix asphalt basically uh, uh, we uh, do uh, like certain additives which will uh, increase uh, like decrease the viscosity. And by like organic uh, next next thing, uh, no, sorry, sorry, uh, organic additives are there like uh, paraffin uh, wax and all which will reduce this one. And then the, there are some chemical uh, uh, additives are there which will improve the friction between the bitumen as well as uh, uh, the aggregates. Uh, and third one is like formed between. Formed between is nothing but a small amount of water and air is injected uh, through the uh, bitumen, which will expand up to 20 times volume of the bitumen, which will uh, allow um, uh, the visco uh, like lesser viscosity for more time. So that is uh, that is another thing which where uh, where we can uh, save the uh, environment as, as well as uh, save the uh, time of construction also and material also. Next. And this is for, uh, based plastic because uh, the, the plastic is one of another uh, issue which we are facing. We have put a lot of cups, but then there also we can't completely avoid uh, usage of plastic. 
So uh, plastic is uh, even after a uh, study shows even after 4,500 or 5,000 years, which it, which cannot be disintegrated. So uh, this is a major threat to uh, environment. So this can be like uh, melted and added to the uh, bitumen, and then uh, the bitumen is uh, uh, that. Uh, 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 this plastic, majorly HDP or LDP, whatever may be it is, anything can be added, uh, which will improve the uh, strength characteristics of uh, uh, vitamin, as well as uh, the durability also will be increased. So, uh, and it will also save our planet. So that is another way of uh, uh, protecting our uh, earth. So uh, usage of uh, waste plastic should be encouraged. So next. The video, I think. Yeah, please, please. The waste plastic is accumulated and is sent into the shredder machine. The shredded plastic will measure between 10 to 15 millimeters. Fixed proportions of shredded plastic is added to the aggregate on a conveyor belt in a hot mix plant. It is then sent to the mixer where the shredded plastic melts and forms a layer on the aggregate. This process happens at temperatures between 170 to 180 degrees centigrade. The plastic coated aggregate is then subjected to bitumen. Plastic being a good binding material holds the bitumen together. The final BT mix is collected and loaded into the paper. Heated aggregates. So before mixing with bitumen. Yeah, then uh, the temperature is limited to 150 to 180 because you now beyond the study shows that beyond 180 there will be a production of uh, poisonous gases. So to avoid that, it is kept to below 180. Okay. So next, please. So another. Uh, 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 way of NGAP because now the material uh, a, a, a saving is not only by reducing the thickness, it can be like uh, increasing the or uh, or reducing the maintenance possibilities where we can uh, we have to think about you know uh, like highly durable mixes. Uh, now normally we do mix designs according to Marshall Marshall. So against that uh, other uh, uh, design, which is developed by uh, Transportation Research Board uh, US, which is called SuperPave. Okay, SuperPave is nothing but you know which uh, uh, which is uh, be, uh, which is uh, one of the result is uh, SuperPave asphalt binder specification, which is very specific to the condition. Like uh, um, uh, if a uh, colder uh, places will be requiring much more. Uh, uh, stiffer or or viscous or lesser viscous vitamin with uh, a certain uh, deformation control, uh, low low temperature cracking and fatigue. No, those nature need to be enhanced. So such uh, uh, asphalt mixes need to be designed, and their test is basically it is not as per Marshall. It it replicates the uh, uh, movements and pressure and stresses. Uh, which intra actually intercept at site. So this is used as hydrologically powered kneading system, which an action much closer to actual field densification of the mix. So that is a super brave gallery compactor, which is used for mix, uh, designing the uh, like uh, uh, super brave. And uh, another uh, way of stone metrics asphalt, uh, which is uh, a, a, normally it is uh, the, uh, the the enhanced uh, version of our normal uh, bituminous courses only, but then 70 to 80 percentage will be course aggregate, and there will be one uh, uh, point uh, like uh, 0.25 to 0.5 percentage of fiber uh, 
uh, which is uh, which will be used uh, for getting high strength uh, uh, bituminous mixes apart from filler and the normal bituminous binder okay next so uh, this is reinforced asphalt uh, pavement which is now irc also supports uh, this irc as well as more uh, now uh, specifications are supporting this one this is generally improve the uh, like it is as good as a slab which uh, which tensile properties have been improved by introducing uh, reinforcement so this uh, geo grid is also acts like uh, geo like um, uh, uh, reinforcement which is usually made of uh, geo synthetics uh, which is a product of uh, petrochemical uh, reaction so uh, this is used for enhancing the uh, in in india now which is uh, made part of uh, asphalt as well as gsb and wmm also which will effectively reduce the thickness of uh, uh, base and sub bases and which will lead to uh, a longer duration of uh, like life of the pavement as well as the the, the strength also will be increased next it basically distribute load into larger area uh, rather than concentrating into one places so point load will be avoided and then load will be distributed to more uh, larger areas which will effectively uh, bring down the chances of damages and reduce the possibility of maintenance next please okay uh, thin white topping is nothing but you know it's an improved version of uh, uh, concrete pavement but then it may usually it will not have any uh, concrete uh, like uh, steel uh, joints uh, but then it will it will have closer or closer shaped or smaller shaped uh, panels which will be laid over the existing bituminous uh, uh, road so uh, uh, this will uh, effectively improve the riding quality as well as the maintenance cost and uh, 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 will be reduced now in alapi town uh, the, the pwd has decided to convert all roads into uh, thin white topping with 150 mm thick slab and uh, some two or three uh, roads have been already constructed and which is basically a maintenance free uh, scenario will create due to high strength wearing coarse material okay thank you next uh, another uh, way of uh, uh, saving the material as well as reduces the uh, uh, possible like uh, 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 surcharge on the retaining wall is to provide uh, uh, geoforms G generally this used in where high embankments have been produced and also in thailand and all they have constructed uh, roads uh, where some sort of filling is required uh, the uh, geoforms is nothing but uh, our uh, uh, what they call thermocol an improved version of thermocol uh, which uh, produces around 10 kpa uh, means uh, the 10 kpa uh, uh, com uh, compression stress and then this is uh, normally now uh, again in ac road this is one of the ground improvement method uh, uh, is suggested by the experts uh, which will be good where the uh, the, the sub soil below road crust having very poor uh, stability uh, and uh, uh, this low weight material effectively reduce the load which will be transferred to the lower portion of where the ground is not good so uh, and this will this will also help in avoiding the uh, uh, settlement uh, and also it it will act like a filler only but then uh, it which requires some sort of loading which minimum minimum um, uh, loading has to be there to avoid the movement as well as uh, buoyancy uh, due to presence of water high water table so and this is environment friendly because uh, Uh, again it will save a lot of uh, filling material uh, and uh, save the natural resources next so uh, and road when when we see into a road we are only thinking about uh, you know uh, uh, thinking about a, a strip which is only used for uh, 
traffic, but rather than that, this uh, uh, space, which is like in, even in Kerala, uh, through busy built ups and other areas, we are acquiring around 45 meter, 45 meter road is acquired and then entire width is utilized for a movement of uh, traffic only. So why can't we utilize this space for uh, another other uh, uh, greener technologies where uh, we can uh, self-sustained uh, uh, energy sources can be made. So one is uh, like uh, we put certain uh, sensors uh, and uh, pavement thermostatic generators, which will which will generate electricity, which can be reutilized in 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 traffic signals and then uh, street lights and those of, lots of other things and uh, and uh, even even in crash barriers and we we provide crash barriers in between inside we can put a simple fan and then uh, that fan can be rotated and then generator through generator we can generate uh, electricity which will be another alternative source for uh, source for uh, energy so we, our roads will be self sustained rather than uh, drawing power from uh, hydropower or any other uh, fossil fuel used used uh, the energy produced by fossil fuels so uh, that way we can think about you now converting our road into much more uh, healthier way so uh, next. And uh, normally Israel, Israel and almost successfully tested this way. A road has been converted, certain stretch of road has been converted into, uh, into a charging uh, platform. So where a vehicle has to pass uh, at a kilometer speed of around 10 to 20 kilometer speed for that uh, LO, over that stretch which will be get charged uh, instantly and then they can continue their uh, uh, journey. See, in, uh, as we are also uh, like moving forward on the dependency of most of the electrical vehicles, this will be a good example. Uh, uh, some sort of these base can be created uh, along our roads, uh, uh, which will be like uh, uh, the basically this power is drawn from the solar and then uh, through the magnetic strips placed below the waves, uh, the battery in the car or buses will be get charged. And they don't have to stop, basically. They can keep on moving. Only thing is human are due to current uh, technology developed. They may not be able to attain the complete speed, but then they have to reduce the speed to 20 or 10 or 20 and then get charged and then proceed your uh, tra uh, journey rather than stopping for half an hour 30 minutes 45 minutes somewhere and stop there and then get charged and then while uh, and, and then proceed with journey this is this will be an alternative very good solution for uninterrupted uh, traffic uh, uh, and journey okay next uh, when considering the uh, like material which will be useful for uh, 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 safety. M many of uh, the components which we create in roads are uh, like sometimes it will be little to the person which uh, going to hit. So now uh, most of the advanced like uh, developed countries are using uh, frangible uh, post or frangible uh, 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 material for uh, placing the uh, like electrical post or or signboards or anything which will have a very brittle nature very which will have very brittle nature and then avoid uh, uh, the impact on the vehicle will be lesser so it will be absorbing low energy absorbing non energy absorbing and high energy absorbing so these uh, when it is uh, uh, high energy absorbing uh, then the, the the impact will be lesser and uh, uh, so, and then we in such in, in in to avoid such collision and then uh, damages, uh, there can be another method like a post will be erected with the induced cracks. So it will fall to some direction which will not uh, know lethal to the uh, uh, vehicle which is hitting on that pole. That is another possibility. So 
these type of advanced techniques are also coming in uh, in a in a uh, in a thinking that you no know, road uh, road should uh, forgive our mistakes so that is forgiving road concept so uh, that is another thing okay next you can see that you no know, that passive structure supports basically this will uh, like uh, the 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 joints and uh, the slip base poles so the the poles uh, slips will be uh, on a hit by the vehicle this will be slipped and then fall on to the predetermined direction so that it will not cause any damages to the vehicle and uh, breakaway connectors because another thing is the electricity which is passing through these uh, poles and uh, uh, signs sign signals which may even uh, Detrimental to the passengers, which is traveling with, uh, with the who's who are traveling on the uh, vehicles. So breakaway connectors, uh, when breakaway poles are used, the electrical conductors must be breakaway. So in that cases, uh, the uh, any short circuit will be avoided. So such things are also coming. Yeah. So next. And uh, uh, reflective markers, road studs, median markers, delineators, hazard markers. These are uh, various materials and devices used for uh, night drive. See, basically this thermostatic plane uh, paint is nothing but a mixture of uh, hydro, uh, like hydrogen, oxygen, and then some sulfate. So these are mixed together. Uh, and and chemically mixed together and then apply it, it it comes in the form of powder which is heated to 180 or 200 degrees celsius i think rajesh am i correct it is up to, yes it is up to 200 degrees celsius it is heated and then applied onto the surface where we need to guide the people with particular sort of mark but then uh, uh, the thing is that uh, when it was very slippery, many many countries have been banned using the, this thermostatic material, and then uh, in but they they could not find out an alternative for this one. But then they came up with the adding some glass beads into that, which made uh, now that the friction has been considerably increased. Now even this glass beads, a combination of thermostatic and uh, glass beads, have been used for increasing the friction where uh, the slippery issues have been observed. So uh, that is a very, very uh, like uh, uh, breakaway uh, findings for safety of the uh, roads, uh, even without any 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 uh, electrification or street lights. You know, if we have a better uh, uh, marking uh, better road with the good markings, which will be enough for a good and relaxed uh, night driving. So uh, that is the best uh, thing we can get. So anything left? I think yeah, it is only thank you is left. So I think we are covered yeah. everything. So basically, yeah, we have got the machinery, material, all those things. So maybe we can uh, open for discussion for something sometime. Yeah, as. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Participants, please interact with our experts. Participants, if you have caught any queries, please interact with our experts. Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, very good afternoon to both uh, speakers. Sir, actually, I have one question. You talked about intelligence, intelligent complexion, right, sir? So intelligent complexion, is some, yes, yes. So it is something which uh, which provide uniform compaction during the construction of payment, right? So is, is there anything which is uh, is there any method or any technique available to measure the compaction after certain years of life of a uh, like road? Like to talk about uh, any between a payment, right, sir? So after five years, after five years of use due to dynamic loading, what is the behavior of subgrade? What is the behavior of uh, like? Layers as far as, far as uh, compaction is concerned. Do we have any technique for that? Yes, yeah, see, actually, see, we are not used much. See, there are a lot of sensors. See, if you see uh, during construction, we have to ensure there is a compaction, okay, for which we have intelligent compaction. Then, once the road is in operation, basically, we need to measure the strains which will happen. No, we, see, we, we, if you see, see, all the permits are designed for the strains, correct? No, yes, 
Yeah. Set for the permissible tensile strain and permissible rutting strain, compress compressive strain. These are the two things uh, designed. So during operation, what we can do is we there are a lot of sensors available. It is not this very costly. You know, we are not adopting much, but there are sensors that can measure the strains on a real time basis. Uh, okay. Can I can I interfere? Actually, uh, in uh, if you if you see latest uh, 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 packages which is floated in Kerala under KSTP or uh, Rebuild Kerala initiative, uh, after one year up to fifth year, uh, 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 the authority's engineer means authority's engineer means the agency appointed by the uh, uh, the PWD or Kerala government. Has to monitor the strength of uh, this road uh, using FWD, falling fa falling weight uh, deflectometer, which will effectively say that no, what is the uh, what is the uh, 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 strain which is developed after one year or two year or three year, and accordingly they can direct contractor to take uh, remedial measures as uh, like uh, similar to uh, like overlay or uh, reconstruction or anything. So that is part of contract already. So and another thing is uh, we we used to core cut uh, these areas and uh, find out the densities. Another way of doing normal way of doing also done. Uh, this is all part of maintenance program actually. Yeah, but now that's what I said. But he want to go one for one step ahead. No, so that's what. Yeah. Those, but I'm saying the sensors so, can be used. Yeah, sensors can be used. Right. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Participants, any more questions? It's even if we are like uh, the subjects are we re we restrained ourselves now because otherwise the topic will go up to five or six hours. Even if we yeah. talk that much, it will not end. So that's the issue. Participants, I hope there are no more queries. So may I move on to the vote of thanks? No, no. Before that, no. I would we would like to say that no, giving an opportunity to address and then share our knowledge rather than no, like taking a class is not our uh, cup of tea. The, the we are sharing our knowledge and then we we usually work in you know consultancy field. So we we deal with uh, many many consultants and contractors. So uh, every day the things are changing. It is always uh, good to share the knowledge. So that was only our purpose. And then thank you for giving us an, uh, the opportunity. And looking forward to have more interactive sessions. You know, because we love to have interactions rather than no, uh, rather than be a radio. So uh, if 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 in future, thank you. Pandemic, yeah, pandemic situation improves. Thank you, you know, sir. We can come there have an have an interactive session rather than no, online. We would, we would like to do that. Sir, we are extremely thankful, sir. Uh, we could see a lot of videos and things that are happening around. Uh, now, I call uh, Jitty Rose for the vote of thanks. Jitty, miss? Thank you, Vindya Miss. Respected Head of Department, Dr. B. V. Matthew, sir. Eminent experts for the day, Engineer Arun Babu, sir, and Engineer Rajeshan, sir. My dear colleagues and uh, dear participants, a very good afternoon to one and all. It's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks to the eminent experts on the day. On behalf of Civil Engineering Department of College of Engineering, Kedanur, and all the participants attending the Faculty Development Program, and on my own behalf, I extend a very hearty vote of thanks to Arun Babu sir and Rajeshan sir for accepting our invitation and blessed this occasion by sharing their expertise on modern materials and trends in highway engineering. They give a deep knowledge on different phases of construction process like land survey, material survey to check availability of materials and its suitability, then design and drawing and planning of construction, the critical stages of uh, 
they are the critical stages of uh, any const um, highway construction. Then uh, procurement of materials and various other phases like uh, construction phase, which includes uh, physical construction, quality control and uh, progress monitoring and also handover process. Uh, Rajesh uh, then give details of various modern construction techniques, which includes uh, terrestrial and aerial LIDAR, drone photogrammetry for uh, land surveying, then modern design tools like IIT PAVE, IIT Richard, Civil Storm, Civil 3D, etc. Modern planning tools like MS Project, Primavera, Tylos. Then modern plants and machinery like uh, 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 mixing plants, road marking machines, uh, curb laying machines, etc. Then Arun sir shares his expertise on new materials used in highway construction to improve the life and reduce the thickness uh, uh, and the cost of payments. Some of the materials uh, I would like to share are uh, reclaimed asphalt payment, construction and demolition waste, warm mix asphalt for reducing CO2 emission, fuel usage, etc. Then shredded plastic mixed in bitumen to achieve durability, strength and life. Then uh, um, super pairs, then reinforced asphalt payment, etc. Then some countries use the road itself as uh, charging points and uh, also for giving uh, support structures, uh, etc. are very new information to me. I didn't he hear about this uh, previously. So uh, thanks very much for sharing this, uh, these new information for us. Uh, once again, I express our deep gratitude to both of you for enlightening us with the vital information and knowledge in modern trends in highway engineering. Thank you very much, sir, for giving such a, such a wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All the best. Dear participants, we will have the next session at 2 o'clock. All of you are requested to join the session five minutes before.